This class is going to go over intraday near a range patterns. And you can add these to your chart um, by right clicking on the chart, going to add script, and then find the NR patterns, NR breakout. And you can set this for any time frame you want. And what it does is, let's say I wanted to add this to my chart right here at 30 minute. It's going to get 30 minute data. And when there's a narrow range pattern, and there's two patterns typically that show up, one is an NR7 pattern, which means the last 30 minutes moved less than the previous seven 30-minute uh, bars. And then there's also an NR4 inside bar, which, you know, the differences aren't very important. Uh, that means that the previous 30-minute bar moved less than uh, the previous four 30 minute bars plus it was inside. The high was less than the previous bar's high, the low was greater than the previous bar's low. The default one I have on my chart is a four hour data, so it's 240 minutes. And basically what it means is the previous four hour period, which you can see one, two, three, four right here, this was the low, this was the high, was very tiny. And in this case, it's a narrow range seven bar. These tend to happen before trends. And when you don't get a trend after one of these, usually it goes the other way. In other words, after low volatility, high volatility is likely to happen, which most people call trends. And with a trend, you can potentially, in some, you know, some days, catch 100, 150 pip moves. Today was a pretty dead day. Uh, but even on a dead day like this, you can use the narrow range patterns to improve your trading. And basically, you want to use in you prefer to trade in the direction of the real-time momentum, which today is to the upside. The daily trends up, the weekly trends up, the monthly trends up. You can clearly see yesterday had very explosive moves up, and for the most part it found support at the hourly moving average. It slightly made a lower low, uh, or broke through the hourly, but never went below the low. So it, it exploded up, pulled back, and kind of went sideways for many hours, and then it had a low volatility pattern here. Always be aware of where the next support resistance is. So normally we want to buy when it breaks out over the high right here at 47. But we got major resistance here at 56. It's not even 10 pips up. We got a monthly R2 level and a weekly pivot level as well. Two pivot levels, one weekly, one monthly. Uh, above that we have the next resistance all the way up here at 73, which is a good distance away. Uh, so if you want to take this trade, I always have a tight stop. If it goes up, installs that resistance and comes back down underneath the yellow high bar here, you know, get out of the trade with a small profit. And then at that point, you really want to see if it uh, breaks out over the high here. Um, and a lot of times, this is what happens. It reaches its head above there and then comes down. Now, one way of using this narrow range pattern is just simply wait for this breakout here. And you most likely would, because today was a pretty lousy day. Most of the currencies didn't trend that much. You'd get out of your trade here with a small uh, 10 pip profit, but you had a good chance to make 10 pips before and then another 10 pips or you can just use our trailing stop which you can see got out at 80 uh, which is a 20 pip move. Let's look at some of the other currencies. This one had a narrow range pattern last night. Uh, unfortunately the weekly and monthly trends up and so if you sold the breakdown right here again support level right here which is in this instance it did break through there and then the market really didn't have that much weakness after that. The longer term trends up, and even when these patterns don't uh, lead to big moves, uh, the fact that uh, you don't get a big move to the downside and the longer term trend is up means when it breaks out of here, you're likely to make some pips, and you can see it shot up 30 pips. Now, the breakout here had a resistance area right above it, and this is why I prefer not to buy when the next sell area is only 10, 15 pips up. You should always take trades that... Uh, are likely to give you two times bigger wins than what your risk is. If you're going to risk 10 pips and only make 12 pips, you know, it's just maybe not worth your, your time. But uh, if you do take a trade like that and comes up and goes sideways here and the strength falls off a cliff, take your 10 or 11 pips uh, and be happy. And the fact that it kind of went sideways right here and didn't pull back and broke out here, you could give it another shot. You know, again, that didn't lead to too many pips, but you wouldn't have had a loss either. No patterns in this one. Here's one that did lead to a trend. Now keep in mind that the weekly monthly trend are down, I mean up, so uh, a breakout from here is less likely to work. We have uh, a support area right here. Typically when support areas are less than 10 pips away, market goes through them and goes to the next one. Here's the previous uh, week's high 
and it's likely to be major resistance at 88. You're shorting here at 18. Um, you have a good chance of making 30 pips, and that's exactly what it did. And look at the extreme weakness here. Normally, when a, a weekly and monthly trend is up and you get a, a currency goes to the lower bands and finds support, it'll usually work its way back up to the hourly, which you can see it did later today. The fact that this one did not uh, work its way back up to the hourly, wasn't able to even get above this weekly pivot right here, means it's pretty likely to continue down. The, the narrow range pattern, the fact that it trended down, didn't get a bounce off the low, um, you know, keep in mind that you're going against the weekly and monthly trend, but you might take a short here for, you know, 10, 15 pips, a little pullback right here, 10 pips, and here's my Fibonacci profit target level. At the lows, and when the weekly and monthly trend are up, most of the time this is where the lowest low is going to be. So at that point, you know, you don't want to be uh, selling anymore. Uh, anytime the weekly and monthly trend is down, you can always draw your fibs off a, a decent sized move like this and do a counter trend trade at the next fib target, uh, especially when it's underneath the white lower bands. Uh, and it's a very safe counter trend trade. Once it went down, kind of went up, came back down again, the weakness is gone, buying this breakout right here. Uh, frequently when the currency's down a lot, and you can see it made one move down, two waves down, three many waves down, four waves down. Um, three and more waves down or in one direction usually you get a counter trend move and most of the time it works its way back up to the hourly. So you could have bought this around 40 with uh, 80 as your profit target. You risk 10 pips with a good chance of making 40 pips. Um, that's just an uh, alternate uh, counter trend method that I threw into this class because I saw it on there. Here you have two narrow range patterns in a row. And typically when that happens, you're going to get big trends. This one has a daily weekly trend that's up and the monthly trend slightly up. And so you bought this breakout right here. If you have two narrow range patterns in a row and you really believe the trends you know, are going to go up, you can always put your stop uh, right underneath the low. And so it goes up, comes back down. Usually I move my stop up here and then it went up to the next resistance area. And you can see it really didn't have that much strength earlier today. But the fact that it came back down again found support at the hourly, the weakness disappeared, um, you know, this resistance area got hit once, twice, remember the third time a resistance area gets hit it's usually likely to break and then it exploded up. Uh, usually when you get one of these counter trend signals, uh, big three and four hour trend reversal yellow dots, uh, that's the end of the move. So I would have exited the whole trade at 70. Today's one of those rare instances, maybe 25% of the time where it just continues its trend, but most of the time, this is a big sign that within the next three to five hours, uh, you're going to get a big counter trend move. So uh, you would have bought this around 45 and been out around 71. This one has uh, a weekly monthly trend that's down. So when it breaks out above uh, the highs here, it's a little bit less likely to work. And frequently, when you have false breakouts above, they almost always go down. So if you had bought this right here, put your move your stop up underneath the hourly, it barely went up. You can see it had no strength. You're fighting against a longer-term trend. Uh, a lot of times when these false breakouts happen, I will personally short it here expecting it to collapse, and it didn't. It never happened. You could have made 5 to 15 pips on this, and it's going sideways here with no weakness. The breakout before was to the upside. It never broke the low of the previous 4-hour bar. And when it breaks out again, you got to go long again. You can see this one shot up uh, about 60 or 50 pips, I mean. Again, I would not trade a lot of lots on this because you're going against the longer term trend. If I bought this breakout right here and hit the resistance, I'd be out. If it came back up here and went sideways, I'd buy this breakout here and maybe make 10 pips. Maybe buy this breakout here and as soon as it kind of runs out of steam, maybe made 15 pips on that. And again, when the weekly and monthly trend are down and the currency goes up with really lackluster strength, you really can look for counter trend trades at the upper band. Most of the time it's going to work its way back to the um, hourly moving average. Here's one that's pretty dead. Again, the longer term trend is down. This is why I prefer, especially if it's underneath the hourly, if it's underneath the hourly, preferably sell the lows if it lines up with the weekly trend. In this case, it broke out over the high, kind of ran into some selling, just 10 pips up. Um, you know, this was a pretty choppy currency. The fact that it had a false breakout when it broke back down here, you could go short. Uh, again, you're out of this with only about six pips. It's kind of chopping around right here. Uh, the fact that it had a false breakout to the upside and the weekly and monthly trend are down, you could also have 
you know, sold the low here at 60. Keep in mind, this is your uh, first profit target, but it went all the way down to 36 here. So uh, 22 pip move to the downside. This one has a narrow range pattern. And again, these oftentimes uh, precede big trends. Uh, this one has a weekly trend that's up. I prefer to, to buy. Um, when the weekly trends up, this one kind of pulled back a little bit with just a brief amount of weakness. Went sideways for another couple hours. And when it broke out above the hourly right here, and specifically the weekly high right here, uh, it's a pretty good trend. You can see it went up about 50 pips, kind of chopped around a little bit, and then broke out again. The narrow range pattern increases the odds that when this does break out, it's going to make a big uh, trend. Usually low volatility periods precede high volatility periods. Uh, it doesn't always happen, but it happens enough that if you take all the trades, you will occasionally catch some big uh, 100 pip moves like this.